Hello and welcome to Ms. Ma's grade 10 math class. This is operations with mixed and entire radicals. So the first thing we're going to do is evaluate radicals and um, this works if we have a perfect square on the inside of the radical. Uh, the radical is this square rooty thing. And uh, so if I have a perfect square like 1 or 4 or 9, 16, 25 and so forth, then I can just get rid of the radical by uh, you know, square rooting it. So you've probably been doing this for a while. So for example, if I have the square root of 25, I know that's the square root of 5 squared, right? And so I can put 5 on the outside. So the square and the square root, they cancel each other out. Okay, and I get 5. So this is true for any number, so I can say that the square root of n squared is equal to n, because the square and the square root are canceling each other out. Okay? So 289, if you type that into your calculator, you should get 17. And I'm going to make you uh, memorize a whole bunch of perfect squares so that you'll be able to recognize them. And this is just one of them. Okay, so if you have a whole whack of numbers on the inside of the radical, you do have to do those first. We're using bed mass. And so you basically treat the radical like a bracket. Um, so I'm going to do the multiplication first. So 2 times 6 is, oh sorry, 2 times 3 is 6, 3 times 15. 45 and 20 squared is 400. You type that into your calculator, you should get the square root of 361. And the square root of 361 is actually 19. You can use your calculator for this, um, but I'll probably ask you to show work. So I'll say something like uh, solve this without using your calculator. Then you have to show all these things in order to get the full marks, okay? So sometimes you'll get a square root that is not a perfect square on the inside. 1350 isn't a perfect square. And so we want to simplify this radical, even though it's not a perfect square. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a factor tree. And if you don't know how to do a factor tree, then um, you can come and ask me in class because it's kind of really important. So 1350, I know that's going to be 10 times 135. So I can just get out whatever factors I think I can. Uh, and I know 10 is 5 times 2. If you look at this, um, 135, 1 plus 3 plus 5 is 9, uh, and so if you add up all the digits and it's divisible by 3, I know it's also, the whole thing is divisible by 3. So 135 is 3 times 45, I used my calculator for that. It's 3 times 45, and 45 is uh, 5 times 9, and 9 is 3 times 3. So I get my prime factorization this way. Okay, so I've got all my prime numbers. And so I'm going to use this 5, this 2, everything that's at the end of the line, right? 5, 3, and 3. So this is actually equal to the square root of 2 times 3 times 3 times 3. I've got 1, 2, 3, 3s, and times 5 times 5. Okay, so in order to simplify this, basically if it has a partner, then it can leave and get rid, get out of the square root because, uh, you know, a partner like 3 times 3, that's 3 squared, so it would cancel out the square root. Okay, so you can see 2 is alone, so it's going to stay on the inside, and I'll put it here, 2, and then you can see these 3s are a pair, so they're going to exit out and become 1, 3 on the outside, so I'm going to put a 3 on the outside like this, and I have uh, one left over three here, so he's just going to stay inside. And then you can see that here I've got five times five, and those are a pair, so they're going to leave. So this is going to be three times five on the outside and two times three on the inside, okay? So that when they leave, um, they they pair up and leave and become one on the outside. And that's how it works. So then we can do three times five, that's 15, and two times three, that's six. And so the outside stay on the outside and the inside stay on the inside. All right, and that's how we simplify radicals. So you have to be able to prime factor, and then you can uh, let pairs leave. Okay, so sometimes I might ask you to simplify by, and it'll be a division, like this fraction right here. So what we want you to do is basically cancel, just like you would a regular fraction. Uh, now, there's a special rule, and that is that you can only cancel outsides with outsides and insides with insides, okay? So I can cancel the 2 and the 5 if I could cancel that, but I can't. But I can't go 13, 50, and 5. That's not going to work, okay? So you have to um, do only the insides with the insides and the outsides with the outsides. I do know that root 1350 is actually 15 root 6 because that's something we did before. So what we could do is cancel out um, the 3 from both of these or we could simplify it uh, and then and then try to cancel. So I'm going to simplify it and then try to cancel in this case but it's totally up to you if you want to do it the other way. Um, 
So we're going to do 2 times 15 root 6, because we know that root 1350 is 15 root 6, over 5 root 3. And so 2 times 15 is 30 root 6 over 5 root 3. And then if we can cancel anything from the outsides, which you can see we can, we will. So um, 30 and 5 are cancelable. So we get a 6 in the top and a 1 in the bottom. And then the 6 and the 3 are cancelable. So I'll get a 2 in the top and a 1 in the bottom. So in the, the answer, I'm going to get 6 root 2 and the bottom is 1 root 1. So we can just leave it alone just like we would with a fraction. If it, there's a 1 in the bottom, we'd leave it. So there we go. That's the answer. So we'll do it again here. And again, if you want to simplify the inside, you can. But I'm just going to straight up cancel if I can. So I know that 9 and 2, I can't cancel at 72 and 8. I can because 72 is 8 times 9. So I get 9 root 9 over 2 right here. And I know the root of 9 is 3. So 9 times 3 is 27 over 2. And I want you to leave it as an improper fraction. If you put it in mixed numbers, I will take off marks. So leave the improper fractions as they are, OK? All right, multiplying radicals. Again, outsides with outsides and insides with insides. So in this case, negative 5 times 2, that's negative 10. And then we get root 3 times 6 is 18. And then we have to see if we can simplify that. Um, this is going to be negative 10 times 2 times 9. And 9 is a perfect square. So I'm going to pull that out. So the square root of 9, and if you like, you can write it like this, the square root of 9 times the square root of 2. And the square root of 9 is 3, so negative 10 times 3 times root 2. So this is negative 30 root 2, like that. And you could do it in less steps, actually. But um, like I could just jump from here to here without doing these two steps. But I just want to show them so that you know what it looks like. OK, so we'll do this last one here. So 8 times 3, that's 24. And 63 times 5, you could use your calculator for that. Or you could use your giant brain, it's up to you. Um, so we get the square root of 315. Now this is a really big number and I kind of don't like it because um, it's like awkward for me so and I want to have to like prime factor it. it's too much work. So in this case I'm actually going to simplify the 63 first because I know it's really easy to simplify the 63. So this is actually 8 times the square root of 7 times 9, right? And this is still 3 root 5 because that's pretty simple. So now I can take that 3 out because the square root of 9 is 3. So 3 times 8 is 24 root 7 times 3 root 5. And then we'll just do 24 times 3 and 7 times 5. This is root 35. And there we go. You should just double check if, on the inside if there if there are any perfect squares in there, but there aren't. Um, so that is our answer. Okay. Now, if you had done 63 times 5 and 8 times 3 and simplified it, you should get the exact same answer. So always look to simplify the inside of the radical. Okay. Now, adding and subtracting radicals is a lot like adding and subtracting regular algebra. So here I've got xy plus 2xy minus 3x plus 5. So the only things I can cl collect here are xy and 2xy. You can't collect the 3x because there's no y in it, so it has to be exactly the same things in it, okay? So here I'd get 3xy, because this is a secret 1, right? Secret ninja 1. So 1 plus 2 is 3, that's where it comes from, minus 3x plus 5, right? So if I'm going to do it this way, this is actually exactly the same type of question. But here I've got a root 6. Uh, and we know root 6 is really root 2 times root 3. But I can't put it together with this root 2. It has to be exactly the same number on the inside. Okay, So I can only collect the root 6 and the 2 root 6. All right, And these are separate terms. They're not related at all. So we're going to just leave them off to the side. And just like with this one, we've got a secret number 1 here, so 1 plus 2. This is also a secret number 1, so 1 plus 2, root 6. So 1 plus 2 is 3, root 6, minus 3, root 2, plus 5. So you can see how very similar these are. You get the sort of coefficient in the front, and then you got the constant, and then we've got our variables or our radicals, right? Those are sort of the same. So. It's just something to keep in mind when you're doing these that you have to sort of try them that way. Um, now, for this one, 3 root 8 minus 2 root 4 minus 7 times, 
7 root 72 plus 5. Um, none of these are the same. However, we can simplify them, so we have to simplify them if we can. Um, so 3 root 8, root 8 is actually 4 times 2, so it's going to be 6 root 2 minus 2 times square root of 4, which is 2, so 2 times 2 is 4, minus 7 times root 72. Root 72 is the square root of 8 times 9, right? So this is 3 root 8, and then you can simplify that root 8 as well, so it becomes 6 root 2. So 6 root 2, so we're going to do 6 times 7, which is 42 root 2 plus 5, like this, okay? Now I'm going to collect like terms, so you have to simplify the radicals first and then collect like terms, 6 root 2 and 42 root 2, so I get negative 36 root 2, minus 4 plus 5 is plus 1, and that's our final answer. Again, just double check the radical, is it simplified? Yes, it is, and then we can move on, okay? All right, so this is my last bit of examples right here. We're going to do some binomial expansion. So just a reminder that when we're doing binomial expansion, basically we have two terms and something on the outside, and we use the distributive property, multiply the insides by the outside, right? So we'll get negative 3x here minus 15y. So it works exactly the same way with the radicals instead of the x and y. So we'll do negative 3 times root 3, and then we'll do negative 3 times 5 root 2, and that'll give us the answer. So negative 3 root 3 minus 15 root 2. Don't forget to carry that negative all the way through, and there you go. So it works the same if I have a radical on the outside as well. 5 times root 2 plus root of 2 times 8 is 16, and then if you can simplify it, you should. So 5 root 2 plus 4, okay? <clears throat> All right, and then of course these are the same as well. I'm using, instead of having just distributed property, I'm going to use FOIL. FOIL. Basically what I have to do is I have to multiply the first two together, then the outside two, the inside two, and the last two. That's what it stands for. So first, outside, inside, and last. So basically I'm just saying I'm taking this one and multiplying by both of these, and taking this one and then multiplying them both of these. Okay, so we do 2x times 3x which is 6x squared, 2x times 4y, 8xy, negative y times 3x, minus 3xy, and negative y times 4y, minus 4y squared, and then we'll simplify it. So if we have any like terms, we will put them together. In this case, xy, 8xy and negative 3xy, and that is our full solution. So to do this one, we're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to do the first two. So 2 times 3 is 6, root 8 times 8 is 64. Then we're going to do the outside 2, that's these outsides. So plus 8, root 8 times 6 is 48, minus the inside 2 root 6 times 3 root 8, so 3 root 48, um, plus the last 2, so the ones that are on the last, root, negative root 6 plus 4 root 6, so negative 4 root 36. Okay. So if I can simplify this, I can. You can like collect like terms first, or you can simplify the radicals first. It's up to you. I'm going to just collect like terms first in this case. It's a, it really is. It doesn't matter what order you do it in, um, as long as you make sure that you simplify the radicals. So 64 is really, root 64 is really 8, so 6 times 8, 48, plus 5 times root 48. Root 48 is really 16 times 3, so I'm going to get 20 root 3. Minus 4 times root 36 is 6, so 24. And then I will collect like terms again. 48 minus 24 is 24, 
So 24 plus 20 root 3. So you can see that uh, the steps are really multiply and then simplify, 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 simplify until you've got the simplest form possible. Um, so you always have to just double check and make sure that you can uh, you can't simplify anymore when you get to the answer, okay? And so we're going to do just these two lo two more and then we'll be done. So you might recognize this as the difference of squares, but of course you could just multiply, use FOIL to do it. I'm going to use the difference of squares. Remember that um, x plus y times x minus y is equal to x squared minus y squared. So um, uh, in this case, x is 5 root 2, so I'm going to do 5 root 2 squared, and y is root 3, so minus root 3 squared. Okay, and to square it, we're going to square the front and the inside, so I get 25 root 4 minus root of 9, and this is 25 times 2, so 50 minus 3, 47, like that. So if you don't want to use um, the difference of squares, you can use FOIL as well. So we can just do first, outside, inside, last. So we get, you know, 5 root 2 times 5 root 2, which is 5 root 2 squared. That's where that comes from. Um, outsides. And then insides. And last. And then when you uh, simplify this, you should get 47. It should give you exactly the same answer. Okay, so this last question, D, I'm not going to do it for you. Um, I'm going to ask you to do it in class and, or for class and bring it to me, and uh, let's see if you can get it right. So you could use the binomial expansion for it, or you can use FOIL uh, and use it, just do it twice. Um, it's up to you. So this is a little challenge question for you to try. Um, and that's about it. So basically all we did was we evaluated radicals. If we have a perfect square, then we can just find the answer. Um, but if we don't have a perfect square, then we can simplify it like this. If we're dividing or multiplying, the outsides go with the outsides and the insides go with the insides. So whether we're dividing out or multiplying them, um, outsides with outsides and insides with insides. We added and subtracted, so we find like terms. Um, and we also did multiplication using distributive property and using FOIL. Okay, so that is it. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you soon. Bye!